The decade of the 50s gave birth to rock and roll, the feel-good innocent tunes that America loved. One group that rose to the top were Atlantic recording artists, The Drifters, 37 times on the pop charts. Five songs in the top 10. Save the Last Dance went to number one. Their awards include Vocal Group Hall of Fame, Pioneer Award to Rhythm and Blues, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Charlie Thomas and The Drifters are still going strong today. Ladies and gentlemen, Charlie Thomas's Drifters. There's nothing quite like this place. There's not no place like this. Yeah. Not no place like this. Good old memories. Lynchburg, Virginia, that where you were That's where I was born. And was your parents into music? Were they into gospel? Well, well uh, on, on Sundays and maybe Saturdays, it used to be a chime in the church. Uh, uh, used to play all over Lynchburg. In the church, uh, my grandmother used to sing it. And my mother and, and me, we just sang, you know, chime songs, you know, White Christmas and all that, especially the holiday songs. They, they play on the, on the chimes and so on. My mother, uh, my father was a minister. My mother was in the choir. Mm -hmm. She used to always sing to me, and I used to go with my father out back when they used to have them old holy roly tents out on, in the, on the field and sing with him. And me and my mother used to go sing with him. And I, I left Lynchburg and I went to the Apollo Theater in New York City. Sammy Davis uh, gave me my first shot. Wow. I worked for a matter of fact, uh, uh, I was backstage shooting crap with the, with the guy. And he stuck How old were you then? Oh, about 16. 16, yeah? Yeah, uh, I had met Benny King. Benny King was my friend, my best friend. I was about 16, I went backstage. My mother always told me never to go backstage, but my school was directly backstage the Apollo Theater. I used to look out the window and I used to see Louis Armstrong, Billy Eckstein, Ella Fitzgerald, all of them going in, Pygmy Malcolm, you know, going into the backstage the Apollo. So I told my teacher, my teacher used to say, Charlie, get your head out that window and put them in the books. And I told her, I said, I'm just looking at Sammy Davis Jr. going back there. She said, where, where, where? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, I went back there one day uh, against my mother's will. And uh, Sammy Davis stuck his head out the window and said, come here. I said, yes, sir. So the backstage hand told me, say, go ahead and see what he want, man. I said, he can't hurt you. I said, go ahead and see what he wants. So I went backstage and Sammy Davis Jr. told me, he said, take this jacket and take my shoes to the cleaners, you know, and shine the shoes and bring them back to me. And he had patent leather shoes, you know, so, and I look at him, I said, wow, these things sure is pretty. He said, you bring them back to? I said, yes, sir. I said, I'll bring them back, you know. And I brought them back to him, you know. He gave me a job with him for the week that he was there, you know, and we just talked about it. And then George Treadwell from the Drifters came in and, uh, he said, you want to sing with the Drifters? I said, yeah. I said, I'll sing. And uh, so I said, I got my friend too. He said, who's your friend? I said, Benny, Benny. Benjamin Nelson was his name, yeah. but he changed his name to Benny King. And so me and Benny got together and we joined Lover Patterson and the Five Crowns. It was with the Five Crowns before the Drifters. And we did a few shows and George Treadwell followed us around. And then he said, I got some contracts. I got about seven contracts. You got to go down south and, and, and fulfill them for me. Do them. If you don't, I'll be sued. So we said, we'll do it. And me and Benny and Doc Green and Ellsbury Hobbs, we went through the south, Atlanta, Georgia, New Orleans, Texas, you know, uh, Mississippi, doing the shows. And we did the show for him. And we just, I just love what we did. And me and Benny decided to stay, stay on. <laughs> the drifters as they were known then were fired in mass yeah they fired the drifters and hired the five crowds five crowds that's right to take their spot right my my first song was kissing makeup with the crowns 
<laughs> and when I got with the Drifters, they, they, uh, George Goldwyn wrote me, I uh, think, a song called, no, Doc Palmer's wrote me a song called Sweets for My Sweets yeah. and Marty Schumann, and it was a hit. Yeah. It was a hit. So, what got you to New York City? You went from Virginia to New York City to school there. What was it that got you there? The Greyhound Bus. Huh? <laughs> and the ground bus did take me. Uh, oh well, I, I yeah, the ground bus did. I didn't have no shoes when I went. I went to New York City barefooted, and my mother found a pair, uh, a pair, in the shoe shop. She found a pair of wingtip shoes. They call them wingtips, and got me a pair of bell bottom dungarees, and with the wingtip shoes, you know, they it was. It very popular back in the days there. It, so she was very supportive of you doing. Oh well, she didn't. She wanted me to finish school. I had one more year. I had one more year, year in New York Vocational High School, and uh, the, they told me to say that, uh, I had to tell her that I wanted to sing with the Drifters, you know. And uh, but Sammy Davis, with the Sammy Davis thing. She didn't believe me. He gave me about four or five hundred dollars, and I brought it home to her. She said, "I've been stealing." I had to prove to her that I would. I didn't steal it. That Sammy David gave it to her. When I told her that he gave me this money, she said, "No, you've been stealing." I said, "Mom, no," and it broke my heart. You know, I started yeah. crying. You yeah. know, and so I had to go back and get Sammy David's picture and his autograph and bring it to her, and then. She, uh, he gave me the picture and gave me two tickets to the Apollo Theater to bring her. Uh, and set her front stage. She just went crazy. Uh, and I told her, I said, Mama, I'm sorry. She said, I'm sorry, son. And we hugged and kissed. We just rocked and rolled with Sammy Davis. Wow, what a thrill. It was a thrill. It was a great thrill. And he put, he had something to do with me going with the drifters too. But, but uh, he stuck with me, in other words, you know, cause he know that I, you know, I came from there and I could sing, you know, he knew I could carry a note. But Benny King mostly pushed me cause he became my partner and my friend through the whole thing. And he just died a couple of years ago. Yeah. yeah. So as you started on this, who were the principal songwriters for the Drifters? Carol King, Burt Backright, Doug Palmer, Marty Schumann. Uh, hmm. They had various writing, various writing. But Doug Palmer and Marty Schumann, uh, hey, they they was more closer because uh, Doc lived didn't live too far from us. And I used to always go by and pull, push Doc in his wheelchair to breakfast or something like that, you know. So Doc was very close to me. Levi and Stroller, Mike and Jerry was the producers of most of the song. No, I won't be afraid. No, I, 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 I won't be afraid. Just as long as you stand, stand by me. So Doc. made the Drifters so unique, their sound? I mean, you started off sort of rhythm and blues and, and had a smooth, silky sound. Well, they had, they Drifters had good lead singers, a good singer, Johnny Moore. He was a beautiful tenor singer. He did Under the Boardwalk. Uh, Benny King, uh, he, he did the magic moment and saved the last dance, you know. That, that's the habit that I had to do to take over myself to become you know, drifted like after they all left, I, I had to do something. I, I wasn't gonna walk away from it all, but it just told me, say, you just stay right there. Benny King, always, he told me, I said, what am I gonna do? Him and George Strickwell had an argument one day. And so Benny walked away. He made right. stand by me and he brought it to me. He said, child boy, say, you like this? I said, I love it, man, you know, like that. He said, well, this is my move. I'm making my move. I said, well, what am I going to do? He said, you just stay right where you're at, so you'll be okay. And I've been ever since then. I've been right here with the drifters. I haven't made one move. I'm the last of them. 
all of them. I met Bill Pinkney. I met all the dr old drifters. Clyde McFadden, Bill Pinkney, Gerhard Thrasher, Bubba Thrasher. I met them all. Jimmy Oliver, the old guitar player. I met them all. Today, as I was just listening wonderfully to your sound check, how you integrated some of your classics with mm. some upbeat, up tempo yeah. music is. Yeah. I assume that's by design and. Yeah, yeah, we up tempo a lot of them uh, because, like, uh, music have changed through the years. You know, we didn't want to stay the same. Uh, there goes my baby. We always did up tempo it. You know, at the end of the song, I don't up tempo it. I do the song like it was done, but at the end of the song, I usually put a little something into it to make it a little exciting. <laughs> Are you amazed? Oh, by the way, you look great for 80 years old. You're you're remarkable. Shit. <laughs> I'll, I'll, edit, I'll edit that. That's um, <laughs> all right. But, That's uh, all I'm proud of what I did and where I've been. But are you? You you really started with the Drifters in '59. Mm, Fifty-seven. Fifty. Oh my gosh. Well, 50, I'm with the Five Crowns. Yeah, mm -hmm. about '59. You say that about '59. And here we are now in 2017. 17. Does that kind of surprise you of the in continued interest in the drifting? Uh, no, it don't. It, it, it just feels like it was yesterday to me. Only thing I miss is my friend. Mm -hmm. But it just seemed like I started yesterday. You know, I mean, but the stuff that I used to do, I don't do no more. I just changed my whole life around, you know. Uh, I came out the streets learning my way, you know. I went to night school and tried to educate myself. Uh, Sidney Poitier told me, he said, Charlie, uh, when I got out of school, out of high school, one more year I had, he said, every day, say you go and you read the daily news or the, or the general, or the, you know, New York Times. You just pick up a paper, you educate yourself. And I started doing it as we traveled. I started picking up papers and reading and everything. Because I used to, I'm a country boy. I used to say, I is and I ain't. You know, I declare and all that. You know, and the, I got up at the Apollo and then when they introduced the drifters and I come out on the stage, the band used to say, I is and I ain't. Oh, Lordy. <laughs> the Ruben Phillip band, you know. So they used to tease me about that, but I educated myself very well. played at the Apollo, which is sort of the mecca of black musicians yes. so many years. Yeah. Um, who were some of the other acts that you may have played with or other people? Back in the time? Yeah. I played with a whole lot. Della Reese, uh, uh, let's see, Billy Eckstein. Uh, these are all passed and gone, yeah. but God bless them. Uh, Nat Cole, uh, Sammy Davis, he, he, I, I love him. Sammy Davis, uh, 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 Pygmy Malcolm, Butterbean and Susie, that's comedy. Um, Jackie Wilson, Sam Cooke, the Ink Spots, one of the last Ink Spots I played with. Uh, I can name a few, uh, uh, Ruth Brown, Laverne Baker, I, I I play with a, a whole lot of them, a whole lot of them. You know, I, I mean, I don't I, I don't think it's the one that I miss. 
playing with. I played with all of them. I, I think I did. You you mentioned Sammy Davis with a great deal of reverence and rightfully so. Were yeah. there other names of, of people who were mentors to you? Arthur Brysock. Arthur Brysock and, and Ray Brysock was beautiful mentor. Billy Billy. Uh, oh, I had uh, what is his name? <clears throat> Jerry Lee Lewis. He came to the Apollo one time, and I called him. He said, fire to the piano. And the audience went crazy. <laughs> they went crazy. I said, I got to meet that man. And I met Jerry Lee Lewis. I met Elvis. I met Elvis. I used to go down to uh, Graceland. And there used to be a little club across the street where Graceland, and Elvis used to come there, whoever appeared there. Elvis used to come there and sit there and play on his guitar as we sang wow. in the chair. I met Elvis. I met Tom Jones. I mean, these are the white side. Sure. White and black. Well, I, I, I met a Tito Puente, Joe Cuba. You know, it's Puerto Rican Spanish. I, I, I don't think I met Sammy Davis and I met Dino. Dean Martin and Sammy and Sammy Davis Jr. and Frank Sinatra. Oh, huh? blue eye. And I look at him, I say, Oh, blue eyes black. <laughs> he said, Charlie, get out of here. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. But he was a he was a joyful and a grateful man. He really was. That was I love the I love I mean like the older entertainers before me because they been there and I was trying to get a hold of of uh, everything that they done, and that's how I educated myself, you know, through that. And they, all of them was beautiful. Pygmy Malcolm showed me comedy. He showed, he showed me. Here come the judge. He showed me the com. Yeah, he showed me the comedy part of it, of him. Uh, Pygmy Red Fox was a, oh, oh man, he was him. He was a, oh man, he keep you laughing. Just to go sit down and eat breakfast with him. I, I met him, I did a show with him in Detroit, Michigan, at the Flame Show Bar. And I mean, I mean, man, I was living in the same hotel. I could not sleep from laughing from this man. <laughs> laughing from that man, believe me. Believe me, it was beautiful. I met, I'm, 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 I'm so proud of my life. Tommy Dorsey, Dorsey brother. I met him. I met that big band. I played with them two down at the Wellington, Wellington Hotel it was in New York City. You know, the Wellington. I just met a whole lot of people. I mean, I was out in the street. I was just, I wasn't married, you know, and I didn't have no kids. So I just let my head go. Yeah. And it's, it just went into it, you know. There's Milton Barrow. Met Milton, and I met uh, Phyllis Dillon. Phyllis Diller. Phyllis Diller, with all that hair and stuff on me. I said, I call her the best Afro in the world. <laughs> I used to tell her, Phyllis, you got the best Afro in the world. <laughs> Thank you, boy. <laughs> well, you're to... bringing back memories for me. This yeah. Is, the Moms Mabley, was mm. it, she part of it? Jackie Mom Mabley, yes. She's part of it, too. I, I did shows with her, too. Oh, my gosh. I, that's funny. That was a funny thing. I did so many shows with Jack and Mom Lady. Oh man, you you got me bringing back memories to myself, you know. Well, I'm thinking about I, I love it. Oh, mercy me. <laughs> when the sun beats down, when the top up off the roof, and your shoes get so hot, you wish your tired feet was by your room. you you know Charlie Thomas you're with the drifters and you know during that really golden era you were there you were the rock yeah, yes, a lot sir. of guys came and went but you were the consistency yeah what was the big break do you think life was my big break <laughs> all I do is relax and let God take me and that's what he's doing now he's been doing it ever since ever since I was seven I just go to church, I pray a lot, and I, I love it. I love God. 
and he has showed me so many things, so many things about life and love and to get along. I try to, and I teach this to my kids. I teach this to my kids too, you know. It's beautiful, life is the beautiful thing to everyone. Me, and not only me, other people out there got the same opportunity that I have. Only thing you gotta do is look. Look and love, that's all. The greatest thing in the world. So when that day comes and the good Lord calls you and he says, Charlie, give me your two best songs. I wanna be entertained. What would be your two songs that you would sing to him that were kind of drifter signature songs? Drifter songs? Yeah, you're I try to sing all of them for him. <laughs> I really, I try to sing every last one of them for him because music is beautiful. Music is beautiful. I mean, uh, I, I, I before I really got into music, I used to like even shower and sing me a song. I, I walk around now whistling and singing me with the big band music in my head, singing me a song. Is there, a, is there a favorite? Drifter song, the, the all of them, my yeah, favorite. Yeah. I love what the, I I know what the Drifters did, and you know I I I did what they did with them. I know what the Drifters did uh, after Clyde McFadden. I know what happened with the Drifters then. I know what kind of music they made. I know the Drifters is the first uh, group, and I was involved. They come out with violin string. Ah, yeah. And there goes my baby with the very first song. They come out. They didn't know what group they was going to use. They started to use the platter. But I, Benny King, Ellsbury Hart, Doc Green, had that deep sound that they wanted. So Doc Palmer called us to do that. So that's what we did. There goes my baby. Before us, they had big old tub with a bass, upright bass, big upright bass. But then we brought in the violin strings and the tuba horns and the, the, the saxophone, all that together. You know, we brought in. It was an amazing thing to see. It was amazing. We broke the barrel, and I'm so glad I'm part. I am part of it, folks. Thank you so very much for everything you've done for Charlie Thomas, me. I'm the last of the drifters I am. And I'm proud to be here to finish it off. Well, welcome to the White Swan Ballroom here. Yeah, well, White Swan is older than me, I guess, but I'm glad to be here. This is my second time. And the boss and the White Swan have been treating me so good, so good. I, I asked them, did they have some old moonshine, but they don't make it. <laughs> God bless. God bless and thank you for having me. Charlie Thomas, that's me. Hey, Charlie, that's me, y'all. Uh. Charlie. I just love these.